Well, Natalie, another bump on the road to recovery from the coronavirus pandemic. The list of states on the tri-states quarantine list is growing. Travelers from Illinois, Kentucky, and Minnesota now have to spend two weeks in quarantine if they visit our area. 34 states are now on that list, along with Puerto Rico and Washington, D.C., also just added. The COVID death toll in the U.S. has now crossed the 150,000 mark. News Force Andrew Siff is live at Penn Station with the latest efforts to stop the COVID spread here at home. Andrew? Right, Chuck. That expanded quarantine now includes part of the Northeast Corridor. Even though ridership is way down on Amtrak, there are many people who travel from New York to Washington and then come back. And now if they do that, they're going to have to self-isolate for two weeks. When the travel quarantine began one month ago, the focus was the airports and a relatively small batch of eight states. You fly into New York, we'll have your name, we'll know where you're supposed to be staying. Now, check out the new map revised today. 34 states, plus Puerto Rico and Washington, D.C. That means many of those commuting on the Acela Corridor need to self-isolate for 14 days. He's trying to protect the state, the city and the state. I agree with him. The situation across the nation, it is uh, still very bad. And there are more states that have exceeded our threshold for quarantine. But if travelers are patient about the new restrictions regulating where they can go, bar owners are getting steamed about the expanding state crackdown. People are the ones that are violating and breaking all the rules and regulations that he is asking them not to break. Yet, he is coming down on small restaurants and bar owners that have suffered millions, tens of millions of dollars in losses. The governor, after the state liquor authority, suspended the license of more than 100 establishments for social distancing violations and other infractions, saying police should break up large crowds before COVID cases spike. If we get lazy, if we get sloppy, you will see those numbers go up. I need the local governments to do their job. And Governor Cuomo said the airlines have been handing out cards to travelers from quarantine states and that people who refuse to fill them out have been getting summonses. We've reached out to Amtrak to see how they plan to cooperate with this newly expanded quarantine. Live at Penn Station, Andrew Siff, News 4 New York. All right, Andrew, getting more complicated all the time. Thank you. Well, it's not only travelers from other states, but also large gatherings without social distancing that could ignite a new COVID brush fire in our area. And Governor Cuomo is calling one such gathering a concert appalling and wants an investigation. It was a drive-in concert, but as you can see in this video from the weekend in Southampton, it didn't stay that way. This was Greg Sergals live in Watermill with the action being taken now. Even possible charges, Greg. That's right, uh, Chuck and Natalie. The governor saying today that civil and possible criminal penalties could result from that concert that was held on this property behind me uh, last weekend. So far, we know that Southampton Town is saying it's issued one violation to the concert organizers, but the governor is also questioning whether the town could have done more to keep concert goers safe. Watermill homeowner Danny Golden had the best seat for Saturday's concert about a thousand yards away. We could hear the music, but you couldn't really see the people. This two second video captures what Golden couldn't see. Concert goers jammed together. Governor Cuomo tweeted the video and later described the concert as a gross violation of public health rules and common sense. It was grossly disrespectful to fellow New Yorkers. Uh, and the Department of Health is going to do a full investigation. Southampton Town had issued a permit for what was supposed to be a drive-in concert on this private property. Up to 600 vehicles and 2,000 people required to stay by their cars. The band The Chainsmokers headlined the charity event. But when they began performing, Southampton supervisor says things went terribly wrong. It appears the organizers allowed people to congregate in front of the stage. That was not part of the permit. We would have never had allowed that. In a statement, the concert organizers said in part they made best efforts to ensure that New York's social distancing guidelines were properly maintained. The criticism, based on a two-second video, the statement says, does not accurately depict the entire event. The video is misleading.
what happened in front of the stage late in the event w was completely unacceptable, completely unacceptable, and we will hold the organizers accountable for that. Ironically, Southampton Town supervisor opened this concert with his own band. Tonight, he's calling on the organizers to identify the up to 200 people who surrounded the stage later in the concert and have them all tested for COVID as the town and state continue their investigations. We're live in Watermill, Greg Sergal, News 4 New York. All right, Greg, we will see what happens there. Thanks for that. Well, new at six, President Trump is again defending the use of the drug hydroxychloroquine as a coronavirus treatment. Many doctors think it's extremely good, and some people don't. Some people, I think, it's become very political. Uh, I happen to believe in it. I would take it. I, as you know, I took it for a 14-day period, uh, and uh, I'm here, right? I'm here. The president just held his coronavirus briefing there at the White House. Dr. Anthony Fauci says that overwhelming clinical trials have shown that the drug, which treats and prevents malaria, is not effective in treating coronavirus.